In this video, I'm gonna edit some raw photos that I captured with my Sony a7C and ZV-E10. The aim of this video is to show you my editing process and explain why I make each change so that you can adopt some of these things into your editing process if you want to. Now we've got to remember there really is no right or wrong way to edit a photo because it's fundamentally art and it's subjective. So I'm gonna leave it up to you what you actually want to take from this video. And just as a note, I'm going to be editing in Lightroom on my iPad Pro but all the edits I'm going to be making are relatively simple and can also be done in the desktop version of Lightroom or the mobile version of Lightroom. So let's crack on. So I've set aside six photos here, ones that I'm interested in editing. I'm not gonna edit all six in this video because I'm not sure what the demand for this video is gonna be like. So I wanna see if you guys are interested in this video and if you know it gets a good response, then I'll release a second version where I edit three more photos. We're gonna start off with this three at the end here that we're gonna look at. So this one is of Jillian, my fiance. This one is of a little owl that I shot at a local, didn't shoot obviously, <laughs> shot with a camera, okay? Shot with a camera at the local owl center that is near where I live. And this one is of a, a really cool mountain looking down Glen Nevis, which is near Fort William in the Highlands. We're gonna start with this one right here, this mountain, and I'm gonna show you my editing process. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to actually start by cropping this. So this was for social media, which all of these pretty much were. So I'm gonna crop it and try and maintain that symmetry here. So we've obviously got this symmetry of left to right of this mountain going from left to right up and then down. And I want to maintain that. So I'm going to want to maintain that. I'm going to use my rule of thirds here grid to make sure that we've got the tip of the mountain where the rule of thirds grid, um, the top part of that is. So we're gonna do that, that's quite a nice crop there. I like this photo because we've got a lot of depth and it really shows off this mountain at the back here. So I'm going to edit this with that in mind and we're going to try and make this back mountain pop out of the, the image. I'm going to start off by with the light here, light settings and actually in terms of the exposure it's actually pretty good. I've shot this pretty well exposed and how I'd want to, the final image to actually look but there are some edits we can do here. So first of all we're going to bring the highlights down just to retain some of that information in this section here which is quite bright. We're going to bring up the shadows a little bit, not too much, just so we can see a bit more of detail in the trees over here. And then we're going to add some contrast in here. I'm actually going to leave the contrast. Let me leave that for the moment because I want to dehaze this whole image. What I'm going to do is actually just go into my effects and dehaze this. The reason I want to do this before adding contrast is because dehazing actually adds quite a bit of contrast to the image as well. So I don't want to do that first or add the contrast first, then dehaze it because then it'll mess up my whole kind of look for this as well. So I'm going to dehaze it here, bring this up until I'm quite happy with that. So not too much, just a little bit. And we can now see it's a lot clearer uh, of that kind of haziness, which is great. We're going to add some clarity here as well, um, because I know I'm going to want that to actually make the mountain pop here as well. We're going to add some texture so we can see a bit more texture in the grass here and in the trees and also in all the details on the mountain itself. And we're going to go back to light now and now we can add a little bit of contrast in here, not too much, just a little bit to make it pop a little bit more. And now this is really punchy, even if just from where we've gone, it looks already uh, a lot better. And now what we want to do, so we've got the actual lighting, everything looking the way we want to. Now we want to fix the colors in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to color. I'm going to actually add a little bit of saturation here just to make it a little bit more saturated. Add quite a bit of vibrance, not too much, a little bit of vibrance here. And we are going to leave the temperature the same. I'm fine with that. The other thing I want to do is actually go into color grading here. What I like to do is add a lot of orange to the highlights. It makes it feel a lot more summery, makes it feel a lot bit more warmer. Although we've got snow on the, the mountain, I want that light that's coming in from the right here. I want that to show as really warm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my highlights and I'm going to pull up the highlights to make them a lot more orange. And I'm going to pull up quite a lot here actually and make that a lot brighter. And we have a nice contrast now between this orangey area here and this blue in the shadows here. So I'm really liking how that, that's looking. And what we're gonna do is actually just add a little mask to the sky. So there we go, we've got our um, sky mask now. And what I'm gonna do is actually just go into our dehaze settings and bring that down a little bit more, not too much, but just so it really adds a lot of depth into this picture because we're really cutting out this mountain and showing how kind of edgy it is, which is really nice. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity into there and bring the highlights down very slightly very slightly there and the contrast down very slightly as well so it makes this pop a lot more and i'm actually really happy with that now so we've got a nice warm image 
and it's looking good. One more thing I'm gonna do is actually just quickly add a mask in linear gradient. So I'm gonna pop this in here. Gonna actually pull this round. I'm gonna put a gradient in here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mess with these green colors down here. Um, what I want to do is actually just go in here and go into my saturation. Make this slightly more saturated. So we've got that green popping a little bit more. And I'm gonna do that and I'm really happy with that. So if we go, this is before and this is after. Loving this photo and I'm really happy with that. So we'll move on to the next one. Now we're looking at our little owl here who we want to actually, he's quite dark because I've actually shot this underexposed. So if you are shooting with Sony cameras, I would highly recommend shooting slightly underexposed in most cases. Um, not necessarily slightly underexposed, but in a case where you've got quite a lot of dynamic range, you want to retain the highlights because Sony's are much better at bringing up the shadows than bringing down the highlights in post. So just bear that in mind when you're shooting your image. So here I'm going to actually crop this first so that we have this guy as our little subject and I'm going to make that really obvious. I'm really going to crop this quite heavily because I want him to be the clear subject of this. I'm going to maybe change this slightly just about there and then we go. We've got him there. He's now the center of the, the image and I'm quite happy with that. And now we need to mess with the light here a little bit before we start anything else. So first of all, I'm gonna bring the exposure up because we've not blown out the highlights here at all. So we're quite happy. I think the exposure was kind of low there. I'm gonna bring down the highlights now so we can still retain those highlights. And uh, we can see here, we still got all the information around here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring up the exposure of him individually, but I'm gonna bring the contrast in here and then I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit and then we are going to go to our color. First of all, we're going to add some vibrance in here. I'm going to desaturate it slightly so it's not too intense. And we are going to go into our color grading like we did in the last photo. And I'm going to bring up uh, the orange and the highlights again because I, I just love how that looks. Brings that warmth into that sun because we know that's the sun. So let's show that it's a warm light. That gives, really gives me that feeling when I warm up those highlights. So that's a personal preference. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but. For me, I really like doing that to warm up those highlights and make it feel nice and warm in the image as a whole. Go to my effects. In this one, I'm gonna dehaze very slightly. We, there's not much haze in here, so I'm quite happy with that. We're going to add quite a bit of clarity here because that really brings him out there. And we're gonna add quite a lot of texture because I want to see the texture in his, um, in his uh, feathers here. And I want to see the texture in the ground as well. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to now mask him out. So let's go select subject. It should find the subject for us. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him up quite a lot here. So I'm going to increase the exposure, not too much. Bring the highlights down slightly. Bring the shadows mainly up a decent amount there. Maybe we've gone a bit too far with the exposure there and bring that slightly down. But now he's really popping. So I'm quite happy with that. And he looks looks good and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to actually select subject again and in this one i am going to invert the mask there we go and what i'm going to do is bring the exposure slightly down not too much slightly so we've really got him popping out here because we've got a bit of information around here which is blending into him because he's quite similar color so i'm trying to make sure that he's actually popping out of the image the depth really helps here because you can see that he is in that that quite a shallow depth of field here we've got quite a lot of information in the back and quite a lot of information here which is blurred out so it helps us pop but overall i'm pretty happy with that it's quite a simple quite a simple edit uh, if i just go done and show you that we've got before and then we've got after and he really pops out another thing you could do here is you could actually mask out his eyes and um and add you know make the yellow pop as well we could make his eyes pop a little bit more if we wanted to, but I'm really happy with that. That looks really, really good for social media, for example. And then finally, we have this image of Jillian. This is a portrait. It's We're gonna need to crop this a little bit first to make it actually look good, but it looks quite good from the off. It's quite a good photo in terms of the colors and the exposure here, but we wanna bring the exposure of Jillian up and make her pop a little bit more out of the image as well. The key thing about portraits for me is preserving the skin tones. So you need to think about portraits quite a little bit differently than other photos in my opinion. So with this one, first of all, I'm going to sort this out in terms of straighten it first. I want to get it in line with the horizon here and that, that looks good. I'm gonna do it four by five and then I'm going to actually zoom 
this a little bit more let's go like that and i'm going to make sure her eye line is in line with that rule of thirds grid there as well so i'm going to press done i'm relatively happy with that and now we're going to move on to the lighting here so generally i'm going to add a little bit more nope i'm going to leave the contrast at the moment first of all i'm actually going to dehaze the whole photo slightly not too much because i don't want to mess with Jillian in this one because dehazing really changes the color actually quite a lot in, in the image a lot of the time so it often negatively affects skin tones from what I've my experience and um, so you don't want to dehaze it too much here we can dehaze it later when we actually mask her out so I'm going to add clarity to this as well which is fine I can add a decent amount of clarity without making it too bad but I'm going to not not do too much but that's fine with me and I'm going to leave the texture the way it is at the moment because I'm quite happy with how her face is looking. We're going to bring the highlights down here so we get a bit more information and we're going to bring the shadows up quite a bit so that Jill pops out of the screen as well. So we've got that there. We're going to go into our color and we are going to put vibrance up quite a bit here. I'm going to leave the saturation as it is because I'm quite happy with the saturation and the colors in the sea here. And I'm happy with the temperature I shot it with the auto uh, white balance and it's come out pretty well so i'm happy with that um, and then we're going to go into color grading and we're going to add those highlights like i said before i just that's personal preference but i do like doing that because it brings it makes this whole scene feel warmer and this is on a beach this is what you want there's certain scenes where you don't want it to be warmer but in this case i really do want to show warmth in the highlights so i'm just going to go back into highlights a second and bring that down slightly because this was losing a bit of detail in the sand and i don't want to do that quite happy with that now we're going to do a little bit of masking here so first of all i'm going to select subject and we're going to sort out how jill looks what i'm going to do is actually bring her up slightly and i'm going to bring the background of the image down ever so slightly as well so let's see what we can do here i'm going to bring that up exposure about there and the highlights down so we're not messing with them shadows up very slightly not too much so it doesn't look too fake <laughs> that's what you want to do you don't want to make it look too fake and i've found that if you do mask out the subject even if it's masked perfectly if you bring the exposure up to a point where it's so out of sync with the rest of the image they pop out in a fake way and it doesn't look good so make sure that you're being subtle with that exposure basically this is looking good pretty good at the moment but i'm going to quickly mask out the subject again so jill again what i'm going to do here is actually go in and invert that mask so invert the mask so we're only editing everything apart from jill so i'm happy with how jill is looking right now and what i'm going to do is bring down the exposure ever so slightly not too much literally a tiny amount here that'll probably do we'll increase the, i'm not going to increase the contrast yet so i'm actually going to dehaze a little bit more here quite happy a little bit more quite happy with that it's looking quite good increase the clarity a little bit not too much and then this is where i want to add some texture because i want to add some texture in the sand here so i'm going to add the texture in without affecting gel there which i'm happy with there as well and maybe add a little bit more contrast there so this is quite a punchy photo but i'm really happy with it so you can see this was before and this is after and it really punches and you can see that gel really pops out of the screen here which is great that's exactly what i want i want your eye to be drawn to that one last thing I'm going to add here, I'm going to press done. I'm going to go back to my general editing and I'm going to go to effects and go to vignette. And I'm actually just going to bring a vignette in there. And I, I, I love a vignette on a, a portrait because it really attracts your eye to the brightest part of the photo, which is Jill, see now, it's completely different. It's kind of relighting the photo so that you've got more darkness in the background, but it's still looking bright and warm and nice. And I'm really, I'm really pleased with this now. So. Just going back through these three photos, we had the before of this and after. Really happy with that. We've got the before of this and after. It looks very subtle and I'm really happy with that one, how that one turned out. And we've got our final one here, which pops Jill out of the screen, which is fantastic. So that's all the photos I'm gonna edit in this video, but if you did enjoy it, then please hit the like button and let me know in the comment down below if you do want to see part two, where I edit the other three photos that I've got on here. But hopefully that gave you some insight into how I edit my photos and how you might wanna take some parts of that to edit your photos as well. But otherwise, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.